you see this? Am I sharing my screen? Thanks. Yep. It's weird. Like I've been trying for the past like five minutes to get um, the presentation view to work and it just messes with all my screens and I cannot find Zoom controls anymore. It's, it's really frustrating. Yeah, the interaction between, uh, yeah, the Safari, or the, and the, the browser-based presentation modes are really bad. Yep, it's uh, challenging for sure. They create a new desktop, which then screws up Zoom. All right, uh, it's uh, the full hour here. So I want to welcome everyone to the functional group update, update for the distribution team. Um, we are going to quickly run through the OKRs for Q1 and Q2 and the things we are working on. But I'll start with the team. A um, couple of important responsibilities that the team has, um, creating an installation method on uh, Kubernetes and uh, all of the uh, cloud providers. Um, distribution packages, uh, Linux distribution packages um, by the means of uh, Omnibus GitLab package. And we are uh, supposed to be responsible for one-click cloud installers. Sadly, um, all of these three are major undertaking. Um, on the upside though, we are hiring uh, to be able to accomplish all of those uh, things. So we are looking for someone with uh, Kubernetes experience. If you have people in their networks that have been building applications that can work uh, in a cloud native way, um, please uh, reach out to them because uh, our pipeline is a bit slow. Um, we previously used Stack Overflow to um, uh, advertise our opening, but that brought uh, more, I would say, noise than, than actual use. So we opted for something uh, a bit different. Uh, we are actively sourcing, uh, and uh, this has yielded a bit more quality in, in the pipeline, but still this is a bit slower than uh, we would like. Let's uh, go to our Q OKR, Q1 OKRs and what we achieved. Um, we'll start off with uh, support for generating Let's Encrypt certificates from the package. Uh, we achieved this in full, so 100% completed um, with 10.7 uh, Let's Encrypt certific uh, certificates are going to be um, fetched automatically, which means uh, when you install the package and uh, specify that you want to use HTTPS endpoint, uh, we will try to get uh, certificates automatically. If um, for some reason that fails, um, then you, we fall back to HTTP. Uh, we are still hopeful that for 10.7 we'll in 
include automatic renewal as well. Um, the merge request is being reviewed currently. And um, we'll have one final improvement for the Let's Encrypt tasks before we move uh, the whole thing into maintenance mode. And that is trying to get um, the certificates for uh, registry and uh, Mattermost automatically as well. Like the smallest step possible there is using SAM um, certificates. The next item is um, also 100% completed. So we upgraded uh, Omnibus internals, uh, which means Chef 13 and upstream Omnibus version. Basically, this is not really that interesting to the end user and uh, because this is addressing technical debt. Um, we did, however, have a very impactful uh, regression caused by um, this uh, upgrade. And um, that made us rethink our strategy for Q2. And you can check out, check out the regression there. Uh, basically, our HA setup was not working as we intended it to work after this uh, upgrade happened. Um, next item, also 100% completed. Uh, we now have uh, measurements of how our um, how much time it takes to install our package. Um, you can take a look at the link provided there. We are using GitLab Pages to present this information. Um, I do have to stress that uh, this is um, MVC, meaning like minimum viable change that we could do because we, are, we were very inventive with this. So um, apart from using our CI and Docker to install the package inside of Docker, we're also using Google Sheets to store these results as an intermediate step and then uh, use um, Google, um, GitLab pages to present these results. Um, we are going to research into using uh, real monitoring. So we are going to look into whether we can connect this to some to, to Prometheus, for example, uh, to, to have this presented uh, a bit better. But uh, at least we did, well, measure something. So we have the measurements there. And with every major release that we have, so dot zero, sorry, not major release, but dot zero release we have, we'll, we'll have this page updated. Uh, so we can see whether there is some impact uh, um, and we can investigate further. Next item is establishing a roadmap for automated vulnerability reporting. Um, so this one is a bit vaguely defined. Um, we could have completed this by just saying this is possible to do or not possible to do, but we wanted to actually have something useful. Um, so the first step was to talk with the security products team to see whether we can use the newly acquired gymnasium knowledge to uh, have this as part of our product. Um, that didn't really work at the, at the beginning. Um, so we went moved with uh, minimal viable change again, where we basically just wrote a script that scans our uh, libraries, queries a CVE data, CV database and gives us the results. So the results you can see there in the screenshot, um, is this version secure or not? And print us a report inside of a build. Um, second step did involve, again, security products team where we added um, a new step in our uh, build pipelines um, and we moved how this report looks into a JSON uh, compatible file that now can uh, be presented in our pipeline using our, um, I forgot the name, so please security products team don't kill me, um, but the feature that presents uh, the report inside of the pipeline. <laughs> um, we do have multiple steps here to improve this further. Um, we actually have to address the vulnerabilities we found. So in 10.8, this is going to be our focus get the whole pipeline green. Currently it's red. Um, and because of that, uh, we allow these builds to fail. So it's a warning currently only. Um, and we want to enable this by default to remove the option of it uh, failing um, and have notification in our Slack whenever uh, something gets introduced um, 
uh, as, as vulnerable. And we also want to increase the scope because currently we are only checking the limited amount of libraries who want to increase the scope to every library that we have in our package. Um, Uh, finally, Cloud Native Helm Chart in Alpha. Um, we shipped this, so it's 100% completed. We have a number of known limitations that are written in the docs. But what's more important for me here is that we are getting some uh, usage of these charts. So users are actually trying this out, even though it's only EE. Um, and uh, we are having our users report some issues to us some things that we didn't consider before. So uh, hopefully as soon as we get uh, uh, charts with GitLab Community Edition, we'll be able to increase the usability of this as well or usage of this as well. Um, moving to the Q2 uh, OKRs, um, this time around uh, the OKR format changed a bit as you probably all know. Um, we decided to opt out for one important um, OKR, and that is uh, HA setup validation. So if you remember in one of our Q1 OKRs, we introduced a regression that caused HA setups to fail. We realized this is uh, a big problem. We don't really have a good way of testing how our HA is working uh, out of the package. So we are going to try and uh, set up validation of, um, of the HA setups, which means the idea is to uh, quickly set up HA, run reconfigure, hit some endpoints and confirm that everything is working. But this uh, OKR is um, twofold, I would even say. With the work we are doing here to automate the setup, we are going to also introduce a way to provision HA more easily than it's currently uh, possible. We tried initially to um, change this around by using different configuration options and supplying uh, better documentation so that users can set it up more easily. But as our awesome support team keeps reporting to us, it's still too difficult to get things up and running quickly with HA. So we are going to spend some significant time this time around to uh, automate this, to make this easier to install. And then as part of our CI add uh, integration testing that will use this tool, spin up the whole uh, HA setup and hit some endpoints to verify that everything is working. Um, basically on demand. How far we get there, we'll see. Um, ideally, we have everything in our CI and uh, our Slack uh, receiving notifications when something fails. A um, Couple of other OKRs that are more generic, I think, um, making sure that we finally do hire that one engineer that we've been trying to hire for the past couple of months and uh, try to deliver 100% of committed issues for each release. Um, I think this one was generic for all engineering teams, but I realize now that I didn't include this OKR in the previous review, so I'm just gonna quickly run through what we did in Q8, Q1. Um, we, did, we were really disciplined or disciplined as much as possible, so we had between uh, 70 and 90% um, delivery rate per release. And whether we are gonna achieve 100% ever, I don't know, I kinda, I'm not really optimistic, 100% is a big number, but this is our goal for sure. And uh, we are going to try and stay disciplined with it uh, throughout Q8, Q2 as well. Um, you might be wondering, well, cloud native charts is a big thing. We have been talking about that for a while now. It is not our OKR, but this is because it is an OKR for the whole engineering team. Um, everyone is, uh, involved in this and uh, we, we are receiving help from every team uh, in, the, in the company basically. And um, this is still the biggest thing for our team. We still are going to spend more than half of our resources. Um, um, let me correct this. We are going to spend uh, half of our time uh, as a team in total 
to, uh, to do this even a bit more than that. And uh, as we know that uh, this has been requested um, by a lot of our customers and the biggest customer we have, GitLab.com. Um, requirements for beta are, we want to have backup and restore up and running. Um, we wanna make sure that you as a consumer can go from your previous installation method into this new world. Uh, we also wanna make sure that we have all the GitLab functionality supported. So currently emails are not working, configuring different um, GitLab options and so on. Um, update is possible, but with version releases. So you currently can update, but um, there is no easy way to lock things down. And we wanna make sure that you can run through the whole concurrent DevOps cycle without a single error. So our demos are focused on running through the script uh, that is concurrent DevOps, and we uh, make sure that all of those things are working. So right now we are at the very beginning with, with this uh, demo, we are hitting all sorts of uh, different issues, and I'm gonna explain a bit later um, about that as well. So some work in progress items. Um, for 10.7, we uh, are shipping auto renew uh, Let's Encrypt certificates, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, Ubuntu 18.04 package, uh, Ubuntu 18.04 is still even not out, but we already have support for it. So uh, yay team, that's uh, an awesome thing to stay ahead of the, uh, ahead of the uh, curve. Um, we have uh, a, a deprecation, uh, of a package as well, but the package is still going to be supported for the next couple of releases, uh, which is uh, Debian 7. Uh, we are going to try for 10.8 to remove some megabytes from the package um, to save some money, mostly, because uh, it takes some time uh, to, to produce the package, and uh, of course it costs some, costs some money as well to store this. Um, and we are going to do various li library upgrades, as I mentioned there, mostly uh, for security vulnerabilities that our scanner found. And for the uh, GitLab Cloud Native chart, uh, we are aiming at getting the GitLab runner installed hey, out of the box. Martin, we're, we're over 12 uh, minutes. Can we take questions now? Yes, of course. And, uh, for next time, like, I think it's a wonderful presentation, but we, we can read it. So you, no, no need for you to read it out loud. Yep. No problem. Let me check the questions. Folding back to HTTP seems weird. Should we be at least offering a self-signed certificate? Um, I understand your point there, but I think there is no big difference, to be honest, because the end user will ultimately see the red page, and I think this is more confusing than having HTTP um, present GitLab. Um, we, can, we can discuss this for sure. I'm open for discussion. Maybe I'm missing something, but at least that's my experience. It's more confusing to get a red page than GitLab. Does Let's Encrypt work with GitLab pages? Uh, we have an open issue for that. Uh, it does not at the moment, and there are a couple of different ways of using this. Uh, great to hear about usage in Alpha Cloud, cloud Native Chart. Is there a place we can see those usage metrics? We don't have metrics, but we have the repository, and you can see um, that at the Helm GitLab IO that someone should link right now because I don't have the link handy. Um, Cloud native chart coming in CE2, right? Yes, uh, we were waiting for object storage to land in CE. I think this happened last week or something. Uh, and we are going to be working towards uh, having charts for CE as well. All right. Um, if there are no more questions. Uh, hey, Martin, uh, we added yeah. renewal. And uh, the, the hard thing with renewal is that you need to run a periodic job. I, I saw we uh, did go cron for that. I assume that that has nothing to do with the system cron, you know, need sudo or something, but it's just a go process that you, uh, that you run additionally. I see so much nodding. I'm not even going to finish my question. Thanks for that. For pages, um, to set up pages, you kind of need, a, uh, like the default domains, um, you kind of need a wildcard. 
uh, Let's Encrypt added that? Are we going to have that work out of the box? Or what are your ideas there? Uh, we are going to work towards that at some point for sure. Not right now because uh, wildcard certificate uh, requires uh, DNS. Uh. Shit. different way of getting the certificate and we don't have that um, out of the box obviously yeah that's going to be super hard to make yeah. work automatically like that's gonna core dns and everything okay i can see how we're not doing that and then for if i set up a custom domain that is something maybe more achievable to then have the https certificate for that custom domain as in so you oh, run get it. web pages uh, with the cloud native installer. All the all the default domains assigned don't work, but I if I want to run it on sitesa.com, um I can do a non-DNS authentication probably. Um yeah, uh, that should be possible, but for pages it's currently not supported yet, right? Like we didn't add that for registry, Mattermost, and pages yet. Uh, and this is a part of our next step. Yep, it makes sense to to focus uh, focus on the other things. Thanks for thanks for that. Um, yep, I think this is it. Uh, thanks for your patience. Sorry for taking more uh, of your time, and uh, see you at the team call. Thanks, Martin. Great presentation.